Thanks for staying with us. Now, Deloitte predicted 2020, the beginning of a new decade that will witness unprecedented cyber attacks and cyber security solutions. They named it the year of shifts, shifts in attack targets, attack magnitude, identification and authentication, monitoring, awareness and education, regulatory oversight, collaboration and a shift in the way organizations deal with cyber attacks as they expect significant changes in cyber crime and countermeasures. They also predicted cyber to be one of the top news headlines throughout this decade in Nigeria and across the globe, as we all saw with the hush puppy trend. Now, how safe is cyberspace in Nigeria? Now, remember to join this conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa 1 with the hashtag Ways or send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081-803-84663. So in a minute, I'm going to bring in our guest quickly, Uti, um, um, cybersecurity. How safe are we in Nigeria? Um, I think a lot is being done um, relatively by the organizations that should. Okay. So uh, financial industry, for instance. I think for me where the gap is is still in the awareness mm. of the average Nigerian. So I find that people are still getting defrauded because they're giving out their OTP. They're giving. So I think that a lot needs to be done for awareness, but we're not at ground we're not zero. There yet. Yeah. Okay. No, we're not at ground okay, zero. We're, we're not, not doing. Yeah, okay, yeah. All right. yeah. So how about you, Timmy? I mean, for me, the way I see it is: look, this social media era and this digitalization and love, it's here to stay, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going anywhere. So what's of vital importance is we have to learn adaptive measures mm -hmm. to be able to exist online. So we can't shut it down. It will only evolve and get amplified. So let's learn how to protect ourselves online. So that's what I'm looking forward to Absolutely. talking about. So, you know, they mentioned something interesting, saying that, you know, companies that think that they do not have enough resource that would attract cyber um, attackers mm -hmm. would, would actually <laughs> be, be, um, be hit, you know, this mm -hmm. year. So, well, we'll leave it for the experts to tell us. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, let me bring in our guest. <laughs> Olushola Ayodele has over 13 years of experience within uh, um, the ever-advancing world of cybersecurity. He has well-developed expertise in security, audit, and compliance domain, um, owning to his impeccable professional development working with payments, global consulting, and telecommunications companies. Now, he's joined this conversation tonight live in studio. Thank you so much for joining us, Thank Ulishala. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. We are honored to have you. Now, tell us. How safe are we? <laughs> <laughs> because that's you know, every time, question. I mean, that's the, the best question. <laughs> because a lot of times people just think, oh, it's not, um, I won't be a victim or whatever because I don't go online and all of that. It's mm -hmm. that really true, especially with what with the trends that we're seeing now with online uh, or cyber um, fraud? Uh, so it's not really true. I mean, I think anybody, uh, there's something you said at the beginning of the show about the vulner vulnerability. So just one vulnerability is all it takes. Um, you're only as strong as the weakest link. So um, like Uchi said, uh, organizations are doing a lot. They're buying a lot of solutions to um, solve this problem. But at the end of the day, there's something we say in uh, security. We say there's no patch for stupidity. So the human factor yeah, is it will, that's, it will still play. That's the weakest link. So everybody needs to be aware. Awareness is, is the main thing. If you're aware, then you know what you're doing. And then Tokba said something again, with the age of uh, social media, people go out there, you post a lot of things, and then you expose yourselves. So the, the uh, threat actors, the malicious individuals can exploit that and take advantage of that. Wow. Yeah. And I think that knowledge for me, um, so when I talked about awareness, it's amazing just on watching TV shows. Forget even reality. Let's just say what we see um, on TV shows. Um, you see something as basic as you plugging your phone into charge at a public port, mm -hmm. and there's an opportunity there for someone to go ahead to and you know the get into your system. <laughs> now, I'd like you to share because there's a false sense of security. I believe that we all have. We think we have passwords, and we think we've protected ourselves, yeah. but. How much do we really need to do to protect ourselves against cybersecurity? Okay, well, so uh, there are some basic things that we need to do. Um, one is, the f is what we mentioned about being on social media. You need to be very careful about what you share online because these people, these threat actors, they use a lot of that against you. They can use it to find a lot of information about you. A lot of us um, 
what do, what do I, how do I put it now? We posted a lot of things about our personal lives. You put your family pictures. When you're on holiday, maybe you go to Disney World. You put <laughs> it and then you say, you know, you're in Disney World. So there's this particular case I have, or um, a friend of mine told me about, he's a penetration tester, an ethical hacker. And he did uh, an exercise. Penetration tester. Ethical hacker. So that's oh, somebody wow. who... It's his, job. Really it's, right? it's his job. You can hire him and say, come and, um, hack, come and hack, no, come and yeah. hack my own organization. I just, I just want to know how good we, we are or how prepared we are. We are. Wise, yeah. yeah. So he went to an organization and the organization was boasting, you know, we bought all these solutions, we're safe. And he actually tried and realized they were really safe. But then he thought about the human factor. And then he went on social media, went on LinkedIn, saw the CFO was um, on holiday in the Bahamas posting pictures. And then he created another profile of the CFO, added his pictures there, his children, everything, having a swell time in the Bahamas, etc, etc. Then he added the CFO secretary and then entered her DM and said, oh, hi, Suzanne, you know, I'm having so much fun. And she asked after the family and he said, they're fine. And then he said, you know, I can't stay away from work for so long. Uh, unfortunately, I've forgotten my password. Move this money. Can you please, you know, get the guys in IT to do password research for me? And she says, oh, short thing, boss goes to them, they do a password reset, send it to him. Wow. And I mean, th yeah. the rest is, is history, <laughs> as, as they yeah. say. So we need to be very careful, you know, that's how social media enters the enterprise, enters the organization, and you know, the whole system is compromised. Wow. Wow. You know, so, you know, <laughs> I have a following question too. So, so how much information is too much? So in the last two to three decades, right, we've seen this digital disruption in every space. Automotive industry with the ride-sharing apps, Movies, we're all on Netflix. Music, we're all streaming. We're not buying CDs anymore. Google, Finance, everything Google, everything. everything. So I feel like every time I even go online to buy stuff and I need them to deliver to my house, I put in my address. That's a data point, right? And so that's something for an entity somewhere, you know, to put together, to be able to build like a predictive analysis for me to say that, okay, every time she orders that and then we go to our house. So, you know. Sometimes I'm worried, like, okay, how much information is really too much information? Because you yeah. just never know. This, are, and then in, we were talking about... Yeah, um, I, didn't, I didn't even think about what you were saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Machine learning yeah. and artificial intelligence in the financial services yeah. sector, for example. Those are data points. Mm. Where you live, the kind of phone you use, mm -hmm. the kind of social media sites you go to. It gives us a profile about who you are. Mm. So how much information? Like, should we just shut down our Instagram? <laughs> Let me just know that. No, 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 no. So uh, the age we are in, it's inevitable. You need to be online. You need to do things. You need to share information. What you're talking about now is data privacy. Exactly. So yeah, you would notice that I think in 2016 or so, we had the GDPR. Mm -hmm. And um, now we have the NDPR. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So all of that is trying to control the amount of data that is out there and how it is managed. And it's trying to empower the data subject. That's you, me, and, and all of us. So um, we also need to be very careful about where we put that information and the controls, the settings you can put in place. Like you can go to Facebook now and everything can be open. Anybody can come in, can see your pictures, can see your location. Some of us post pictures and we have things like location tagging. Mm. It will tell you where exactly with coordinates and say okay, this so person I, is here. So I stopped doing locations. But the truth is that when you're in the media, you're not, it is actually almost like a taboo. It's like you sabotaging yourself to put your account on private. Yes. Do you I understand? Know. Yes. So how do you now, um, how do you navigate that and still be secured? You know, because I, for, you can never catch me tagging location. Mm -hmm. So I, I stopped that a long time because I, I, for me, I even looked at it from the, why am I oppressing people? So I'm in Paris, I will now come and put location <laughs> now Paris. So, tag it. So, yeah, so, okay. so, no, no, actually, it was for me, it was just a personal decision that why yeah. do I need to tell someone that I'm out of the you country? Have to I don't pay, have to do them. that. No, so, but that's, so, so that was why, <laughs> and I didn't even know that was actually a good move in terms of security, yeah. you know, saving myself from the headache of, you know, somebody knowing that I'm not in the country. Yeah. So how do we, you know, in the media space, because a lot of celebrities do this all the time yeah. and you keep hearing oh this person's account was hacked blah blah mm. blah so how do we do that you know still have an open account yeah. but at the same time is, is secured so it's it's usually not just one thing so your location is one thing mm. then the other the other contents that you post are other things and you know basically the things you say so it, it's all going to map together and form a big picture 
So if you, I mean, if you're, you have to disclose your location because of the nature of your job, then you should be careful in the other aspects. So that's how it works, really. Okay, so, so okay, sorry, I wanted to add a follow-up question to, I think, what um, Tammy asked about. Because part of the research I was reading, it said something about the main targets for um, cybercrime in this new decade that we're at. Um, cloud-based systems, because mm -hmm. you know now everybody is storing everything in the cloud. Mm -hmm. um, user mobile devices, organizations that are non-financial non sectors are going to be big targets, and SMEs. Mm. So how do we, you know, protect... Me, I'm even very particular about SMEs. Okay. You know, but generally, these four things that I've listed, because yeah. everybody is going to the cloud to, to save data and all yeah. of that. So how do we protect ourselves? Okay, so like I said earlier, I mean, there are cloud services that you can use, and they all have settings. So it depends on how you configure it to be. You can leave things open and anybody can actually come in. You know, those of us who work in organizations, we have uh, solutions that actually show us this kind of attacks. If I, if I tell you how many uh, email alerts I get of people trying to hack into my environment in a day, I think uh, every day I probably get like 500 emails. So they are trying to no, enter. No, but so, so that's another thing. You don't need to have money. Yeah. In fact, they don't need to know that you're an organization or that you are the CFO or anything because sometimes they compromise your system to use it to, to talk attack, to your supplier to, to, attack, somewhere to else. even attack another system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there's something they call botnets, meaning I have kind of like a, it's like a zombie kind of thing. I've compromised one, two, three, four, 10,000 systems, and now I can attack one system wow. and I can bring that system down. And you won't even know that your system has been compromised. So, so talking about how to secure that now, there's the basic hygiene etiquette, cybersecurity hygiene that people need to do. Like, you know, you need to patch your, um, your systems uh, regularly. And then you make sure you don't use weak passwords. Some people use very easy passwords like password one, two, or the, even the password password <laughs> yeah. as the password or dictionary words. And I mean, there's so many tools now. If you go online, you can download a tool that can crack a dictionary word in less than five. I mean, while we're here, I could have cracked any dictionary word that you use as your password. So now, we have my, I think the minimum length of my password is like 12 to 15 characters. Yeah. And then it's wow. a mix of lowercase, uppercase. <laughs> I mean, oh, no, but that's what. <laughs> For me now is how you remember, but I mean, no, I, I'd, I'd like to. But then you're going to poison because somebody can get in there. <laughs> if I die tomorrow, at least my children can access the password oh, <laughs> to internet banking. <laughs> so, so I like to bring um, this cybersecurity issue because when I was reading, I saw you know every 39 seconds there's mm. an attempt, and when you say you're getting 500 in a day, I yeah. truly believe that. Um, but I want to bring it home. Okay. Cybercrime in Nigeria. Mm. Now, we are known for certain things. So when I googled yeah. cybercrime, <laughs> the definition, it says, it's the compromise of computer systems. For example, when you receive a mail from a Nigerian, Nigerian prince. prince. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, oh, we have become somewhat synonymous with um, cybercrime. Yeah. So first of all, uh, before the uh, a cyber world came into play it was credit card fraud mm -hmm. now we've moved it online mm -hmm. now is it and i know this is silly in, in view of the name that we shall not mention <laughs> it's profitable yes oh yeah short answer mm -hmm. okay now why is it so easy because to me hacking sounds like a very complicated thing you know when you watch tv you just mm -hmm. and you know yeah, so you're not how is it that our <laughs> young people and forgive me, don't come for me, but you know, young people, they're the ones that get it. How do, how do people get into this thing? Because to me, it seems all like gibberish. Okay. So, uh, so many things. Uh, let me start by correcting the fact that hacking itself is not hard. I mean, that there's a complicated side to it. it and um, TV is not doing us justice. So you, you see somebody with a black screen and so many lines of code going <laughs> up. But sometimes that's not what it is. You know, um, once upon a time, it used to be that hard to do it. But now, so it's like a, it's like a castle. N normally, you have walls, you have fences, you have all of that. But why should I bother jumping over the fence or destroying the wall when I can just impersonate Lance, someone oh. or and yeah, open the or door go for in me. like a legitimate person. Mm. So rather than breaking into her enterprise, if I can just get her username and password, I'm in. 
So that's why fishing, I mean, I think we all know what fishing is. Mm. It's kind of like the way you go to a lake with a hook and bait and somebody and a fish bites. That's what they do. They send you an email and claim to be somebody else. Oh, I'm the producer from Ways Africa. Would like you to have, would like to have you on our show. Click this and view my profile. Immediately I click and, you know, you, you don't see anything as a user, but on the back end, that file that you have clicked has given that person access to your, your system. Laptop. It could have copied information from your system and sent it to a remote system. So many things could have happened. And that's, that's what happens. And that's why it's very mm -hmm. easy. And now you have things like malware as a service. You can actually buy malware online. Wow. Yeah. So you don't need to know how to code or write scripts. You can buy it. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Profitable. It's problem whichever, in the land. Whichever way you look at it is profitable. Ah, you know what? But <laughs> are we going to drink? I want to go and drink water. <laughs> I'll be right back. Please stay with us. We'll see you shortly. <laughs>